So in a previous video, we talked about uh, histone modification for chromatin remodeling as the transcriptional level of gene expression control. Now we'll look at post-transcriptional control of the gene expression. And in a nutshell, what we're saying is that we've done our transcription, which means we've made our mRNA, and now we just need to modify it to make sure that translation can happen well, or if we even want to make different types of proteins from the same original mRNA. So now we have a look at how they do it. So in the very beginning, you've got your uh, DNA double helix, then transcription happened, and we've made our pre-mRNA. Now, keeping in mind that during transcription, there is no distinction between what types of genes they are. So meaning it will basically make an mRNA that containing both the introns and the exons. So let's say here, we've got a real mix of them. Let's say the black sections are the introns. And then we've got our exons, which are the other bits there. Hopefully you would remember this, uh, introns are sections of the DNA that doesn't really code for a protein or a functioning protein, whereas exons are the ones that, um, that do. And so, because the mRNA now has a real mix of these things, so we say that it's not really ready for translation yet, so we call it the pre-mRNA. Basically meaning the precursor of the real mature mRNA. Before it goes into translation, it will need to uh, we will need to do RNA splicing to remove all the introns. And that's the first step. And if we remove the introns, then it will look something like this. So now that we've made that, we need to uh, transport it to the ribosome for translation. However, uh, we want to make sure that it doesn't get degraded or gets damaged during its movement through the cytoplasm, the ribosome. So therefore, we need to protect it. Um, we do so two steps. We add a cap to the front of it. And the cap is a uh, modified nucleotide. We add it to the front bit uh, in the five prime end. And after that, we will then add something to the back as protector as well. So we will add a tail adenine. Imagine a long chain is entirely repeats of adenine. The point of doing these things is to uh, protect it. So we're saying that we are preventing degradation and stabilizing the mRNA now call it a mature RNA and which is now ready uh, for translation in the ribosome. However, we can do it more if we want to. We say, yes, this is the gene that we uh, use to do translation to get one type of protein. However, we can also change that uh, by further RNA splicing or further RNA editing uh, to change it into different types of mature mRNA. Let's say our original version is uh, E1, E2 with E3, but we can change it so that it becomes just E1, E2, or we can change it to E1 and E3, or if we want to have E2 and E3 only, uh, and it would still, and it'd be fine. Or even sometimes we can have half an exon or part of an exon with the rest of the other exons. Uh, but you can imagine the different possibilities uh, there would be. The idea is you can create different versions of the mRNA to make proteins with different functions. So even we've only got one single original mRNA, we can still make um, many different possible proteins from that one single mRNA. And once it's ready, it will then go to the ribosome for translation. And in summary, this is the post-transcriptional level of gene expression control. So our DNA uh, transcription was allowed to occur, then we make our pre-mRNA, which is a precursor. Then we do RNA splicing, where we remove all of the introns, meaning we remove the sections of the DNA where it doesn't really code for protein. And we add a modified nucleotide in the front, and also the L of adenine on the back there, uh, which stabilizes the mRNA, preventing degradation. And finally, if we want to, or if we need to, we can do further mRNA editing where we can get different versions of the same mature mRNA to create different proteins with different functions.